ourselves for our Eileen because I forgot the name tags and then that'll jump us over to the public invited to be heard. So we'll start over here. Teresa Kransky. You? Melanie Muskie. Jeff Lewis. Susan Marwitz. Pamela Bachelor. Penny Finley. Steffi Lewis. Lara Rutledge. Hey, and I'm Lara Mann. Um, Danielle and I work together and she's like, you're this. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, yes. So, do we have additions or corrections to the meeting minutes other than what Cindy sent me today and the changes that Jennifer has already sent, which are all grammatical? <laughs> You're kidding. Right? I know, shocker. Okay, I, can, I have a motion to uh, approve the minutes as augmented and changed. Oh, oh right. Nice. I, I uh, vote to uh, accept the minutes as amended and changed. Thank you. Second. Okay. Uh, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Minutes are approved. Uh, any additions to the agenda as presented this evening? The no. question yes. I had for you yeah. was you had asked for, about to talk about the, the event in the uh, Park. Okay, and we'll put that into new business. Okay. Okay, so item new business number 12C will be uh, Juneteenth for 12. Okay. Hey, Thursday. Final Friday. Please. 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 And then we can actually, while we're making it, and then as we would just strike 13. Chiquita is not. Any other changes to agenda? Okay. Moving right along. Commissioner, welcome. Like on the formal front, we'll start with Melanie. Maybe you can just tell us. Just I think that this is probably the first meeting. I'm gonna talk to you. Little <laughs> slow. Um, and you can just tell us a little bit about you and what brings you to our public places. And I don't know if you have met everybody, but so this is Melanie's first official meeting and as well as So take it away. Okay. Um, well, I'm really excited to be here. Um, I have a background in urban planning, which is kind of how I got into this whole business. Um, I just finished a term on the Board of County Planning Commission. Uh, so I've been looking for a new board to take on, and I moved to Walmart well about two years ago. So once I saw there was a board called Art and Public Places, I knew I had found my new goal. <laughs> so very excited to be here. It seems to be the marriage between urban planning and art, which I love. I'm an artist as well. Um, I work for Walmart well Yarn Shop, which is called Manny and Jennifer. Um, and I've done a couple of events with Art and Public Places that you guys have done throughout the years. And admire all of the cool sculptures. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what um, I can do as like a placemaking in public art and how I can learn about that actual installation and that's the things of it, if you will. So looking forward to it. Thank you for being here. And Nettie, this is like your third meeting, which is fantastic, but it's your first official. So <laughs> anything to add? Um, no. <laughs> 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 All right. All right. Well, moving 
right along, um, we'll go into the Sister Cities Project update, which uh, I think since the last time that we have been here, uh, Susan, we've narrowed it down. So, and then of course the event is on Wednesday. Do you feel comfortable talking about that a little bit? Uh, we have three finalists. Three finalists, oh. And I briefly looked at um, what they're, they're, they're all interesting and different and um, it'll be I'm really excited for the Wednesday meeting next week to see what they present. Do you guys want to see the finalists? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Let's do it. I didn't know if we I will I, yeah I think we can. I mean anybody can come to the meeting on <laughs> Wednesday. So let's and just we the invitation to Wednesday meeting to the city line that we got today. Oh thank so I think we are give a good crowd because you know some people like to go everything with this. So. I know. I think the only confusion <laughs> at this juncture <laughs> is that the public feels like they can vote in yeah. these ones. Right. So we may yeah. have a little bit of a clarifying. We may be clarifying. Um okay. Give me a second. Oops. Um, oh, let's see. Wake up before you go to bed. Okay. Oh, it helps if you're actually working. Jeez. It's been a long couple of months. Well, everything's wireless nowadays. Oh, so right, exactly. So this is like so 1982. Okay. okay. Thompson Park, so that makes sense because it's a structure and it's a gathering space. It has a mosaic. He's a painting before. Is Thompson the, the uh, gazebo ish? Yeah. Right. Uh, so and then doing? Jody Bliss, who has done figurative work and has been on display in Art on the Move with us before. Um, and then uh, Lisa Russell, who is a Fort Collins artist. And uh, her work also is a bit figurative, but um, certainly like plasma cut uh, aluminum and steel. So I think that idea of kind of a gathering space with some dappled light is probably where she's going to be playing. Very colorful. I will try and uh, just a bit of a visual bit for you all. Um, so going moving on, the final selection is Wednesday the 27th. Jennifer mentioned was in the city line today, which is great. Means that we're going to have more people than we usually have, which means that I definitely can use volunteers. If you haven't seen the volunteer sign up, 
Um, I'll send it again. Um, if there are no shifts, that doesn't mean you're not needed. <laughs> Just come because uh, I can always use help stacking chairs at the end of the night, cleaning up and doing the dishes, the, you know, pointing at trees and kids' trees. Mm -hmm. that last night, uh, there's lots of opportunity. And uh, each of, in the volunteer sign up, it shows the jobs and kind of what's happening at what time. So I'll be sending that to you, but it was in the last email that I sent. So any questions about Sister Cities? Do you said that you guys next Wednesday? Oh, it's next Wednesday. That's Wednesday. So the best results get here about 5.15. I always get it kind of at 5, even though I'm on the selection committee. So yeah, that would be great. I'll have to that would be great for sure. Uh, we're having volunteers and selection panels set up at Pisa, and then I'll set out that could be stuff for the so end date here. Hopefully, um, so it's um, is Hogwarts still on? No, it's not Hogwarts. <laughs> uh, it is uh, Missoula, Missoula Theater. Oh, okay. So they use this as like their kind of practice space where they're blocking everything off. Oh, and so I think for the most part, they'll have their things like to the side. And we'll just meet kind of in the middle with this if I can figure out how it works. Uh, it just feels a little more intimate, and I think that the discussion will probably be um, just more helpful. We had the event last night in the auditorium because we didn't know how many people we were going to get, and I was not interested in stacking chairs. And uh, I don't know, it was very formal. It felt very grand. Well, and there were like for 30 sure. people, and the, it oh, was no. huge screen. <laughs> and it was, I don't know, it was kind of way. I thought it was so I cool. liked it. <laughs> <laughs> it was very I it was important. Cool. <laughs> I, I did too. I liked it. I, I liked I it. Yeah. And you know what? Because the screen was perfect. So <laughs> the mural is huge. It's huge. I, I committed that right It's very long. It's so good. That huge screen was good. Yeah, it was just so I really funny like because it. the the selection panel decided to sit halfway up. I was on the third row with the time cards, but I still but the my nose is on the level with the artist's <laughs> feet. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we should and we should jump right in unless there's any other questions about Sister Cities on Wednesday. I think we'll be in here unless we collectively decide that we just do it again just for fun. I will warn the artists though. Okay, yeah. Time. Like, is it too uh, intimidating or should we just plan to do it in there and make it seem grand? So I mean, it, it is like, grand, but it is for, it is grand and feels important. And I mean, if we have it in this space, it's gonna feel not this cluttered, but it's gonna be kind of like this. Let's we'll just do it. Yep. Right. I mean, I, I wasn't there last night, so I don't know. It's presenting all yeah. that. And here's the other piece. If it is, so we've got Sister Cities Association folks who might show up. Let's say that's a dozen, right? And then if it's in the city line and then a bunch of people show up, I'm not really interested in being like, let's grab chairs. Ah. Right. If we do it in the auditorium, then. It's all sad. Yep. You could also grab a section off the where you're going selection panel yeah and you just coordinate that piece. yeah and these and, and I think it's gonna be some good people left. yeah mm -hmm. so maybe we'll go and have a little field trip at the end of this meeting and anybody who's interested in have that setup go walk with me so we can just have it figured out so we're not doing the probably shuffle right before presentations like yesterday it was a little weird but it's okay so let's talk about last night who wants to start should we start with selection panelist number oh, one yeah. Randy's not here so yeah, tell us what I say. Start, start at the beginning. Yeah, I'm going to. Okay. So while you're talking, it's not bleeding, so I'm going to try. Okay. And uh, how many How many, How many? many was it up to begin with? 27? 35. Oh, 35. Okay. So out of 35, we brought it down to three, and we ended up with three incredibly different artists. Um, one of them was more of an abstract artist working with a lot of geometric shapes. Um, the other was more of a realist, would you say? Yeah. 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 Figurative. Yeah, figurative. And then the other um, that was the chosen one. I don't even know how to explain my shoes. Okay, finalist. 
he works in um, realism, but in animals, but then adds um, color and geometry, so linear. So all very, very different. They all three artists brought incredible um, pieces you see it? to show us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So here, hold on a minute. I'll open them up. Okay. Oh, I'd rather not record this part. Oh, I'm near the door. Um, okay, so we'll start with the first one. Okay. Um, so finalist number one. So that's artist number one. Nice to meet Mariah. So this was her idea of trying to bring 1,000 inches to Longmont. Um, she wanted to bring in a generational piece. Um, as you can see on the left hand side, is a grandmother figure, followed by the mother, fulfilling their wishes into the little girl. Um, she was very open with the idea of different female or different people um, being the subject matter. The little girl in the middle was actually chosen because it was her niece. Um, the other two were just people that she had shows up stock images. Um, and her concept was she wanted to use a lot of stencils um, that were going to be made to make um, over a thousand wishes, which would have been the dandelions. Um, and there was a few things that we were a little concerned with this one. Uh, one being the time. She wouldn't be able to start this mural until um, the spring, which was kind of, for people living there, it was a big deal. Um, this project needs to get kind of underway as soon as possible. Um, also, um, we were a little concerned about the supplies. Um, do we we're going to need to have her, we were going to have to talk about the people that she used because that was brought up as a diversity um, that the audience would like to see a little bit more. Um, Putting through all of the through Longmont. Um, another subject was brought up was that there was also the mural kind of similar over by Shiba Hut, even though there was just a few different things I think that, that were pretty good points that we all kind of have brought together um, regarding this one. Um, but it was going to be a lot, but we're going to have to go back to Mariah a few other times to get new mock ups made, um, new images made. Yeah. Um, they're incredibly beautiful. She did an amazing job. There was also the maiden, so she. I mean, oh, yes, that was it. Oh, too. She's saying that if you get her, well, we're going to have to bring it back to her. She's back. We're going to ask her to use our supplies that Walmart will recommend. Um, she, her vinyl coating and UV protectant was a three to four year. We were going to need to recoat that every three to four years. The other two artists were 10 to 20 years on both of their reports, um, which was is a really drastic difference when you think about what we actually have to do as our places in maintaining those. So that was a really big thing. Thank you. Because uh, I kind of forgot about that. Um, next was David. David Fon Fantu. Um, he used a lot of imagery um, and shapes based on things that we found in Lama. He um, he really loved the Lama Performing Arts Center. That was his main um, focal point. The art he had, he really loved that, and that was kind of his whole point. Then also the buildings that you can see coming down the alleyway. He loved it. also the architecture of that. So he tried to bring those shapes well into what he was going for, along with some of the entrances and the umbrellas going through and the spoke. Um, he genuinely had a great idea. I, I personally really loved his work, but the only problem we kind of come up with a few different things. He had two color options. He did not use the actual sunshades at all, which was kind of a concern amongst the panel. Um, that he did not incorporate those by any means. Um, they're very, they're very green, and there's like more of a, um, a natural flow to those, and not so. Um, <coughs> yeah, yeah, like right, like right now so she just has this gray, this gray panel, and uh, that's actually not what it looks like at all. Right. Yeah. So it's, he didn't. It was kind of a, it was hard for us to all see it coming together on that regards. Um, he also used very high end paint. He um, showed the two color palettes that we would be able to choose between. Everybody was definitely leaning over to the bottom. Um, but the problem for us, really, in line, I think, for the 
panel was he, the main part of this project was going to be a side panel on the heat. I wanted to do an additional piece on the side of the building, which is beautiful, mm -hmm. but we don't, we don't know if we would have access to that. And so basically his whole flow, if you're looking at from this angle, it flows so nicely down that alley, but it just, if you don't have that piece, it doesn't quite bring that whole area together. I think it's kind of what everybody really decided. Um, but yeah, that piece on the side is gorgeous. I mean, you can definitely see the architecture from the front, the front of the house that he brought through on that, which is cool. But again, um, there's definitely some thoughts of potential movement on that side of the, build, of the building. Um, they also don't think that the uh, um, owner would have allow that part to be Yeah, and I confirmed it. So, oh, you did? Yeah, so that would have been in there. So um, we unfortunately, um, the project is whether or not we need this because we would have liked another finalist. Um, but it's been a gentleman. Has he confirmed? Yeah, we talked, I talked to him today. He has the contract, the preliminary contracts in his hand. Exactly. So it started out with that image. <laughs> that is how I And that is. <laughs> Um, he had a, a beautiful storyline of his love of Longmont, and it started with a prairie dog skull, and he made sure he really let us know the in-depth of this. Um, We're like, where is this going? going? <laughs> yes, um, he has a lot of associations with Longmont, senior male. Um, he's a huge advocate for birds. He loves what we're watching at Longmont. Um, that's yeah. He was really good. Yeah, he's very <laughs> So he, he kind of is just trying to bring recognition to Colorado wildlife. Um, and this is what we have finally decided on. So you have seven birds on this um, that are all native to the Longmont area. Um, each one of those you'll find throughout. Um, the Blue Heron um, specifically was kind of his pride and joy um, of starting this project. He has a very close relationship to watching those. I didn't know this, but there's a lake in Longmont that they all migrate to. Um, I, I went to walk with him yesterday, which was really cool, and it was a whole project. Um, which, did he say what sort of that is? Is that the yeah, it's it's sort of like the no, he's, it's not, it's he actually, said where it was. Yeah, we'll it's find actually out. a lake that's like, I looked it up earlier, it's actually like, I think it's called Blue Heron. Oh, oh, yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. yeah. So, right, yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he threw in the, the, the um, hawk, the, the reptile hawk, the um, peregrine falcons on the blue part in the middle. There's a hummingbird down there underneath the hawk's um, claws. There, there's an osprey. Osprey, right? Thanks. That's right. Thanks. I was like, what, what is this? Um, and then there's one more there. Oh, this is a great course. I know. So, so there are right just right now. Yes. So, so you've got the three on that There's side. the raven. Oh, okay. There's the owl. Uh -huh. There's the peregrine falcon. That's the osprey. Oh, that's there's awesome. the hummingbird. Oh. And there's oh, the um, oh, the heron. And then there's that guy, whatever that that's is. That's what they're going to be. But I think we're going to have to play a little bit because the easement ends here. Um, so we either have to extend our easement or we're gonna have to play with the composition. And I also confirmed with him today, like everybody's flying that way, which is south. And we're like, oh, this is so intentional. They're flying south for the winter, obviously. <laughs> um, no, in fact, that wasn't the case. I was so like, I played with it and like, He's like, when they started like swooping at each other, he was like, it was kind of weird. Anyway, so he'll probably play with the composition okay. a little bit. Okay. But he was like, yeah, but they do all migrate out. They do. He's like, all of them migrate. Like that one. So. <laughs> and don't forget, there's images and flowers behind. You stand yeah, the right. Yeah, right. In the oh. background colors. And along with oh, your okay. hiker, that is also Long's Peak in the background. And oh, it's, not, it's not a hiker, but that's the, the lining of Long's Peak. The keystone. Oh, I see it, yeah. Okay. okay. So there's the, the, the keyhole. Key right. Oh, there's a lot going on here. Going on. There's a lot. Yeah. Is that for the hawk with the ribbons? Yes, yep. Okay. That whole line is like oh, all through there. That's going to be Long's Peak. Um, so, with that being said, because there is so much to see in this beautiful piece, that he is adding 
some cool ways to see this from different views around the world. Oh, so he is putting oh, the binoculars. There's going to be two sets. Um, they have not been decided of where they would be. There's been talks, but no, nothing is for sure at all. I thought the guy from the roof said he could put it on the roof. It's yeah, but sure. that was, oh, we have we to, have to we've got that. a lot of work that we have to oh, do see, before yeah. we can have oh. public art on private property. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Yes. But yes, like, yeah. preliminary discussions have happened. I've already, he contacted me ahead of time and said, and I even proposed this, is it even in the scope of reality? And I said, I'll make some phone calls. I made some phone calls, and yes. It's possible, at least from like what you're seeing here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, coordinating with a private what? a public <laughs> versus public private partnership is a whole nother ball. So, but we're gonna investigate, and we're gonna we're gonna he's gonna manufacture them. Yeah. No matter what, and that's part of the project. Angela, I, I imagine how your desk would look right at that. Because every time we're here, you're like, I'll make some phone calls, or I made some phone calls. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. If you ever call me and you're like, your voicemail is full, <laughs> there's a reason. <laughs> a lot of phone calls. Oh, that's um, awesome. So, yeah. I'm really excited about that one. I really, really like it. And um, I think we'll see it in Yeah. That space and the negative space, and him dropping them in there as much. It's, this is a wacky space to work. It is a wacky space. It's unfortunate that all those other things are breaking up the. the I think there's personally allows for that like wonder and creativity, and just like in the fact that he played with it so well, like to be able to even put that animal in that space. Like I don't know how he did it personally, mm -hmm. but that being said, is. He, um, yeah, it is a very difficult space, and it, it, the fact that these three artists were able to come up with the art that they did for this odd space and to try to maneuver around the bed is going to be really tough, yeah. but it is going to be a really cool thing to see happen. And yeah, I think that with this, with the binoculars, it'll be fun. And they talked about adding, I don't know if you mentioned it, but the hummingbirds, potentially adding a few more like hummingbirds in there to brighten it up a little bit, and also to kind of, again, use those binoculars to to make a smaller little line. Yeah. 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 So, so we like seek really and find. Cool. You know, we have now with the birds that come through that have little, um, you know, orange breasts, you know, they're bare, and they have yellow yeah, edges in the area that are all somewhere. I love them. They love birds. I have some pictures of birds. They talk about them. They're the process of this too. I love them. Yeah. 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 There's some other amazing ones. So we're gonna have to see what happens with the easement first, and um, uh -huh. and then we gotta get them under contract second. And once we feel like we're we have some legs in this project, then we'll certainly mess around with composition. The other piece that we have to remember is our easement agreement includes. Sorry, did I sigh loud enough? Because yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, includes a review by the building owner. Developer, so there's some aspect of signing off on this prior to you kind of giving your official second official thumbs up. So, um, yeah, I mean, we're so today, um, Danielle, as, as a representative of the selection panel, is going to make a motion for you as a body to accept this proposal going forward, knowing. This isn't the end all be all, but this is the direction. And the, the composition yeah. matter. I love how you incorporated those panels, the metal panels. Um, um, I think that's a really good, like the birds are really good with the, those particular panels. They're not flashing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The other thing that's really neat is he has a licensed lift operator. Oh. So you can, <laughs> you can, you can actually get, get the, rid of the lift and run it himself. And he's insured and everything. Yes. So we're, that's good. You know, that's really, uh, that's awesome. That was a big bonus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she made it worth a lot faster. Yes. yes. So I think it's a six week project, start to finish. Uh, he is ready to, he's look, reviewing the contract now. As soon as I get city attorney and um, blessing the language on everything. Um, then we'll start working on starting to work with the easement process. Then, if at any point we have to change the composition, that's when the selection panel will be roped back in to make decisions. And once that composition is blessed and the business owner has looked at it, I'm hoping by the time we meet again, 
I'll have something for you to see that's more final. Um, if not, I'm hoping that the motion that you put forward today will just allow it to be what it is, because chances are he'll be done with it by the time we meet in September. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's right. That's great. He's, he's kind of, he's, he's not his first grade yet. The first one the com uh, committee said was a little dark. Mm -hmm. um, the second one had, I, we couldn't decide if that was what the suggested one was. I see more green here, but it seems like a similar colorway. And then the bottom one obviously is more warm, is warmer. But everyone liked the idea of the sun rising and setting kind of situation that's happening in the middle one. So yeah, this is the palette. This okay. is the, this kind of primary thing. And the panel really like the green too. Yeah, I think that came through on this one specifically. Yeah. Because the, you said that the middle is also green. It's like the Oh, yeah, you want to see it? Yeah. So that green will match or will clash with me. I don't I know that that goes go with, with anything. Yeah, that's sure. me. <laughs> yeah. That's a nice picture of that. Thank you. I put that up there for our flannel. Our Flanders thing. Yay, how exciting you guys are. So cool. I love that. Is it Kelly? Kelly. Daniel, did you want to make a motion? Oh, yeah. Yes, oh, you know, she's, she's, making, she's making a recommendation. There's a color. So the, the abstract geometric part was the altar. That was the same choice. That was really funny because there, the panel, that's the actual panel part. kept changing their vote on the alternate, mm -hmm. and we ended up having to take like four votes of every time I was voting. <laughs> yeah. The, one thing that the panel said that came to the second, the, the second panelist was he did use all the color palette that was matching the building except for the green and on the window shade. So the rest of his palette was supposed to intertwine with that building too and with all the other colors around there. So we all thought that like overall, and we also thought too, it was gonna be the, the piece of the people just gonna be the other color. So. Angela, I really do like the, the dandelion one. Uh-huh. Yeah. Possibly talk to her about doing a smaller? Uh, so it doesn't work that way. Because <laughs> we need to have an equitable process for every project that we do. That said, I did ask both David and Mariah if they would be uh, if they would consider staying on my list for opportunities. So as opportunities arise, for example, that public-private partnership for mural opportunities for business owners. So if someone's like, I really want something figurative, I want it to be gentle and kind, I really have an express X Y Z. I can say, here are four artists that do that kind of work. Here are their portfolios. Give them a call. Because so, well, yeah. didn't we, when we commissioned a piece for the 150 members, we both just commissioned that piece and said, okay, we need to have something like this, right? Uh, that composition came from a couple of people on Art and Public Places working with city um, staff to direct the artist of what they wanted to see. So, we also, at one time, it was mentioned that maybe it was off the table. Um, at night and at main, where they take them down that yep. building and they're going to put it up this other way. Yep. At one time, they mentioned that they were interested in training. They the are. Girl. So that would be great to yep. be able to reference those elements. Yep. So if we can get, and I think we can based upon our last meeting and the code decisions that you decided to make with the temporary and changing things from visual, um, we'll be able now to start looking into extending grant opportunities. So for example, a private business owner wants to bring $5,000 to the project in our own public places, 
matches that. And instead of us choosing the artwork, we can either give them suggestions of what they're looking for, or we can go through our regular process. So if they, as a business owner, say, this is what I'm thinking for my business, and you know they're responsible for maintaining it, it becomes a part of our collection, but they're responsible for maintaining it. So there's all kinds of finicky ways that we're sharing the responsibility of that artwork in perpetuity. And so that will be the opportunity for someone who owns a business to say, this is what I'm looking, this is the theme of my business. I want to bring a local artist or someone from Colorado and we can hand them. This is something that they proposed for us in the past. This is their past work. This is who you should contact to get this kind of idea. And the um, Dandelion Vision, she owns that design, right? We gave her a stipend to create the proposal for that work, but the intellectual property of that is hers and hers alone. So if she wanted to revamp that for a business and they work together and come up with something kind of similar, that's on her and we would absolutely, if you like it, we would support it. Yeah. But going about a direct a direct purchase, typically that comes from something like um, Ursa Major, where it was on display for Art on the Move, and then and then it went away, and people were like, "What happened to our bear?" And we're like, "You know what? You the people say you really like this work. We're going to bring bring it back and directly purchase that." That is still can see considering the community's vision of art in public places with a, a commission, we want to make sure that we put it out to a field and narrow it down. Right. Um, to that point, yep. I drove by the, you know, the silo that Gamble was working on. He happened to be there, coming oh. off the road and painting. And he came down and talked to me for a few minutes. Cool. And his mural with the um, bow and arrow. Oh my gosh, and that. that was going to be torn down. Yeah. Right? Along with the silo, which I knew you knew about the silo. But anyway, I asked you if you'd be interested in, in what you thought of, you know, a public private kind of thing. You said that one of the building owners down the road has already proposed to have him do a mural, but the guy doesn't have enough money, um, as one example. Okay. And the problem that he has. And then, um, anyway, I said, well, we should really document this. Beautiful. People love your mural. It's yeah. so sad that it's been torn down. Um, so, yeah. anyway, I did talk to him. Yeah. He applied for this. Did he? He was a. What, what did he come up for? Do you know? Yeah. We were just really worried about the space. Um, like this, because like, as you said, Burks, like the Burks and Hands, and like, yeah. it, it's tough. It's so tough because you feel like you're missing something out of And even with the first image with uh, Mariah, and that's what we were worried about with the head space. Mm -hmm. We were like, we're not going to get that. You won't be able to see all three hands at one time. One hundred percent. And so, with this selection of him, it was like, can I do what was him? And like yeah. in my heart, I was like, oh, I wanted it so bad, but it like, it just, it was one of those feelings that it just. Oh. Like, I so love that. And it was, but it was, it, it was just really kind of chilling and shocking. Like that's what Paul Sandy book. Are you serious? Yeah. 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 Oh, and uh, when I first saw it, I just loved it, and then it, it occurred to Sandy. And just, He's very oh, powerful. And very yeah, powerful. Yeah, very, very powerful. Very powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And in the right space. Oh, yeah. It, 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 it's, it's really like cool. this. Like, what that is, is so cool. Yeah. 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 yeah, I love that one. Because he always does those trees so oh, well in that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and that's why, for me, I thought maybe he could potentially do that. I still just didn't think there was enough room for it. But imagine this with holes in it. Start oh, looking at oh, it, oh, and now yeah, stick a bunch of holes in it. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's a way, at least from a figurative perspective, of, it's, a, it's a challenging space. Yes. When you look at all of these mural artists, very few of them have had to deal with the space that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. right. It's really a difficult space. And tell us too bad that there couldn't be Additional, sorry, additional panels put on those openings. No, nope. because it's a parking garage, they have to have well. It's a whole be, thing. But that would be like, it would have holes in them for ventilation. That's what the windscreens are. They yeah. initially came to us trying to have that be in our public places, but the um, architect and the building owner wouldn't release uh, 
the liability for us attaching something to the building, us being an artist that we commission, etc. Anyways, it's kind of a long story. Oh, Susan was there. Okay. Um, anyway, we got a mural. Awesome. Another. But uh, anywho, so yes, so there were um, a thirty-five uh, of the thirty-five. I would say two thirds were very, uh, were very good. Very, very good. Very and, good. Uh, you want to see some Sister City stuff real quick? Yes. We're just gonna we're gonna make this very informal today. That's what happens when Angela runs meetings. <laughs> well, okay. but I do feel like you should make a motion while we're. Oh yes, meeting. good idea. Otherwise, we're gonna be here forever tonight. Somebody has to make a motion. Right. She needs to make a recommendation. Yeah. I have to make a recommendation that the art of places um, goes further with this mural from A to B because it was for the project. I okay. second. All in favor? Aye. Um, and we'll add to that. May we augment that motion in just saying, um, allowing us to go forward with any of the composition considerations that might be made. But so say the whole thing under composition. So that that you make that you're making a recommendation that we move forward uh, with this artist um, as keeping in the same vein of the look and feel, but accepting. In advance, any composition changes that could occur. So, um, I recommend that Art Public Places um, moves further with the work from Adrian's on the mural, um, with um, potential changes to the composition um, regarding the building um, easements. Perfect. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Fantastic thing. Are the shop art things still set up in the building downtown? Yep. Yes. Yep. We're not the shop art twice. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm going to jump backwards real quick. What hours is that? Oh, okay. Seven. Uh, 11 to 4 ish. The building closes at 7. Oh, yeah. on Saturdays. On Saturdays. Yeah. Okay. So come down and get a bubble tea. It's, I have six to seven shifts on Saturdays. So come is it um, on the east side? It's on the east side on the 230. Okay, so come down and see us. Have both. Saturday? Uh-huh. Okay. And, and, and. <laughs> and, and, and. <laughs> it's always closed. I go there every time I go to do to work there, it's closed. Oh no. And, well we did have a close when we said. Alright, I'm gonna guess. Hold on. Hold on. Ah, 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 ah. We did it. Yeah. Okay. So this is portfolio images okay. okay these are the portfolio images for the request for qualifications that somewhere in the mixture of what this artist does is the proposal that's going to come out of it does that make sense mm -hmm. okay so this is mario echevarria's work so obviously these fishies in steel or aluminum along the side this is clearly metal in a mosaic That's definitely like plasma cut steel or plasma cut aluminum. Oh, that's it. That's a whole thing. Oh, oh, I went down to see it. Which is great to it's see so artists working commercially. That's great. There's some neon too, apparently. So while I was in Spain, I went to Gabby's Park Well. Yeah. You know, I've been there for four minutes and, you know, she talks it, it, yeah. it is still so impressive. So okay. Like how can you pull those things then, in? Then, I'm sorry, I'm just guessing. I don't know. Nope. Nope. Oh. Okay. Well, I'm going to guess. Yeah. This. Oh, this is God. Lisa Russell's work. Okay. Oh, she's so. so this again, this kind of plasma cut steel, very colorful. That one obviously has the monarch butterfly, which is you know so this is the second artist. I think. The, it's one of the right. second finalists. Yep. Yeah. I like that a lot. The panel yeah, really too. wanted to see something that could look beautiful from the lake and be higher because so everything is as yeah. well as uh -huh. on the shore. So you know, it's something sticking up and a lot of motion. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. I'm 
blob is me redacting the an image of a person. <laughs> so that may or may not be the artist, but it shouldn't impact the way that you look at those. Yeah. All right. So that's the second artist. Were those mosaics? What's that? Were those mosaics? Uh, uh, I don't think so. I have a paint. Um, which is kind of questionable how that would hold up over time. But I think the art, artist and the selection panel are more interested in, in uh -huh. this. Yes. Right? yes. Okay, and then the last artist. No, yeah, I'm so good. <laughs> Having a good day. Okay, is the, is Jody Bliss? And this is the Ursula. Ursula, same one as Ursula. The era? No. Okay. So very figurative, but mm -hmm. uh, that image I just cropped it. And I'm so sorry. This though, I think that you know there's some opportunity to bring that kind of. Um, dabble light through some of this glass or plastic. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, she works in all kinds of metals, so coming up with the structure would be an issue. Well, and they, Sister Surgeons, was really wanted something that captures the shade. Yeah. Um, so that'll be interesting to see what this one is. Yeah. yeah. So that. So is that first artist the same person who did the Thompson Park painting? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And then that um, under all of my mess in the desktop um, is the location, right? So that's where it's going to be seen. Cool. All right. Moving right along. Does anybody have any questions about spoke or sister cities? We're cooking, guys. We are we are going to be on the normal line, so I felt like forever, but we need to leave now, and I don't know if it's going to slow down. Um, okay, um, shopper, shopper. I know that a number of you are signed up to volunteer on Saturday. Thank you very much, because I think that that's one of the biggest things. Is it's hard walk downtown, so there's already a lot of people down there, but the more that we can people to sit there like what is this they don't read the sign how do I participate they don't read the sign <laughs> it is can I vote they don't read the ballot you yeah. know so the more that you can be there and just encourage them and, and then talk up art in public places is amazing um, what hour is on Saturday well uh, it's on the volunteer thing I already sent you the volunteer thing sorry I haven't paid attention no, no you've been out of town it's, no it's totally fine 47, um, 47 okay and one hour she has I was there today, and our, I don't know if you've seen it, but we, a couple of months ago, we had investigated getting a bigger ballot box because our ballot box kept getting all filled up. And so we hired a gentleman by the name of Ryan over at the Tinker Mill, and he made us a balsa wood ballot box, and it's Awesome. Yeah, it's very cool. It's so it cool. Is. And I mean, so $125 y'all spent on Ryan and his That's time it? And his material. I know. It's very cool. I, I kind of was like, are you paying yourself? Well, yeah. Anyway, he was very sweet. And so he was like, and he even said, can I put a Tinker Mill logo on it? Yeah. He's like, you don't want to do this big. I was like, do it. So it looks really great. Um, so go check it out. Uh, we have had. 688 online votes wow. so far. 600 or 688 voter voters. Wow, that's good. That's good. Yeah, and then I went and pulled a handful out. So August 1st, we are doing the counting. Cindy and I think Susan was there last year, and Randy and I. Um, it was a little clunky last year, but I have it all figured out now. Through the online, once they um, send me the results, I can then go back and filter IP addresses. I can filter out fake email addresses. I can I can see basically if somebody from an IP address like tried to stuff the ballot box, 
and then I can, of course, gently remove all of them as one. So I think it becomes a fairly equitable process. Um, and then it's just really going through those ballots one at a time and taking a peek at them and just kind of looking and making sure it's not somebody who's trying to pull shenanigans. Uh, Cindy, when she gets back, will be putting the email addresses on and the uh, votes from all of those manual ones into the spreadsheet so we can filter them, but we still go through and do an extra count because we because voting matters and elections matter. Yes, that's right. So here, when is the voting counting? On um, August first, here at the museum at six thirty. It's gonna be late. It's gonna be a late night. But that's what happens with elections that matter, right? <laughs> go into the night. <laughs> Or the next week. Or the next <laughs> months. Okay. Um, any other questions about Shocker? So it closes. Um, oh, and uh, I'll also send out a volunteer thing. Um, okay, so when the. Do you have a question? Yes. You sent something around to, the left, to us last year for the issue about on Shocker? Yeah, we'll get there. Okay. Yeah. Or we won't get there today. We'll get there next month. So basically, once the, um, y'all can paint anything you want, right? You're not limited. At a certain point, the public can say, like, we're painting, or, you know, we're kind of cut it off. Um, we did 10 last year, and that included 9 plus 1 commission, what you're thinking of, which is the commission. This year, we did put a call out for uh, someone or anyone to consider doing, like, an homage to power in the hydroelectric plant. We received one, yes, one of 35 that actually did. Really? The power. Wow. So y'all might have to make a decision if we want it, want it or not. Um, and then, you know, we should still do commissioner's choice. So you should say, you know, I'm going to do nine plus one commissioner's choice okay. or, or whatnot. So I wonder if you could ask, ask the artist to add something like, like a batch onto the agreements. I but think the just, like, trouble like, is like if we ask one artist, we really should have asked no, 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 I was just saying, so we could go back and say to all the artists, like, you could put this little badge on so that there would be on uh, there would be I think we do ten this year, well whatever. They all have a little badge that says a hundred and fifty year celebration of LPC or something like that. Yeah, I think um when we when we start the call process that we need to try and keep like if there's a theme um, to give the artist the opportunity to do you know stay within that theme so if we would have required everybody like power is the theme this year rather than you can do power or whatever you want then maybe that would have made sense because it would have been like this is the year of power and they are all evocative of power and here's the badge because it's 100 but if you have like a pride flag one with a power thing, like if, if there's a little bit of disconnect there. Um, so it's, I think when we do these call for artists, it's best to give them all the information all at the same time, all within their design, when they're designing the composition and then kind of go from there. There will be plenty of opportunities to continue to work with LPC, but I do think this year we kind of learned like if, if the theme should have been power, I should have done it. He needs to be about it. Just power or not. But not a lot. We didn't get very many entries. This was before my time. When there was a theme, we didn't get as many entries as when we just say, be an artist. Girl, be an artist. Great. So Plus, as the shop art gives this we that opportunity for entry level artists. Yeah. So we kind of don't want to combine them. I, I yeah, no, oh, I know, and it, and maybe there, but there, you do bring up a good point. Like, is there a way because of maybe don't we can celebrate LPC and the hydro plant as a program? Maybe um, we do have the new map that needs to come out this year, so maybe that's where a sticker or a QR code to their story, because when you read it in context, it's really great. But if it's like a if it's like Pie box. It's like, yay, power. People are like, power by pie. Power by pie. <laughs> yeah. Power by pie. That's what he said. I don't know. Um, I personally could be a person.
appreciate LPC. I think they're amazing. Yeah. They're an amazing deal compared to what everyone in the country gets. Wow. And it's just phenomenal. So I yeah. love that. And we need to think we need to find a way to to celebrate them. To celebrate them. Okay. Maybe even a dedication and invite them and do something that way. Yes. Oh, okay. I will make a motion that we do a dedication. Shot invite the LPC. Uh, employees celebrate them and thank them for all their hard work. Love them. Recognize what they do for the community and how important it is for Longmark to be successful. Sweet. Will you do it in the fall? Uh, sure. Deal. Okay. <laughs> you want to second that motion? I will. I'll second it. Okay. Because I really like things like So we'll just kind of do a shock art, shock art 150, 100 year hydro plant. Shock our dedication party. Okay, so all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any opposed? Hey, task force. Hey, Stephanie, you want task force? Who else wants to be on the task force? That's okay. I haven't had it. I'm doing that. Let's we'll see. Does anybody else want to be on the shock sure. art? I'll be on the shock art. Yeah. 
uh, I thought we had two really good choices. But um, I, I really, um, I could see the whimsy and, and uh, we were just gonna ask for a little bit more negative space so that the forms, cause he really packs them in, packs. So we were really gonna try and, there it is. <laughs> there's, there's the playground. Yeah. Did you see actually classified as a playground? Yes. Yes, that's good. Thanks, oh, Rory. Yeah, there it is. It's like a rope or something. Oh, and it just so needs to be. There's a rope you can like hang on. <laughs> they said the and there's one, a turtle you can ride a turtle, but well, it doesn't they move. For a kinetic sculpture, and there's a chair that goes. In there's a the one chair, but that thing they <laughs> asked for something that moved, they and that they got that. Right? Yeah, and that's what they got. So anyway, <laughs> so this this pad plus all of the surrounding. Sidewalks are in play. Oh, those are Yeah, I checked with Timber and the respondent, so all those items are also, I'd like to have like a, I don't know, like to have like a checkerboard and a hopscotch. And That's what we suggested. So it's called, we're calling it Basketball Plus, and it's Basketball Plus what? Like Basketball Plus Hopscotch, Basketball Plus Foursquare, Basketball okay. Plus, and Four so it's awesome. all up to the artist to so, right, um, okay, here we go again, hold on. Uh, I have a one. I have lots of squares, and the, my neighbors are always going to over and use to play. One, five, and eleven, okay. So, this is one, and I think you're looking at more like this. Kind of whimsy, whimsy, whimsy. I know I love the scissors. I love them. These are very nice. Okay. And then five is this. Can you see that? It's kind of bright and it's magic. So very, also the same kind of thing. Like very well. Oh, this person has done paint by number community paint before. So that's interactive because that's what we're going to do right, right. Mm -hmm. so labor day weekend that's fun that's fun okay so i can see how the and then oh, cool. um, so that i mean like lots of shapes and colors um, and then did i see another one and oh yeah this is the one that um, the animal was just visual. discussing yeah that's <laughs> this kind of but okay. like we, I said, happy eyes, like not sleepy. Yeah, eyes. I was like, well, like stone eyes or something. Well, yeah, I said sleepy, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the thing that folks were looking at and interested, like this one, that's kind of like slimy and like gooey. So anyway, so I put this. That's. Yeah, so these three artists are each being paid five hundred dollars for their proposals, which are coming back, and then that group we have to find a date for sitting and doing um, the final selection. But this is actually going to go out to the public for a public comment, feedback, and then those that feedback will be taken into consideration. Um, and I do have a question about that, yeah. Angela, because you were asking us maybe to give you some written. Uh, examples for like the postcard that goes to the copy. Oh, the copy, yeah. yeah. And is that just to to vote? Yeah, I just need to. I just need context or copy. Or I just need some copy writing. Okay. All right. Because I I just I didn't want to you know yeah say uh, the wrong thing. Yeah. I'm like we'll we'll work together on that. Okay. So anyway, so that's Kylie. So task force is Pamela and Teresa again. When that final um, meeting is, will be open to the public. It is going to also be a really quick turnaround. So we'll get the artist um, proposals back at the end of this month, July. Um, they will go up for public comment the first two weeks in August. Selection panel is going to uh, meet probably the week of the 15th. Um, so we can get that person nailed down, get them under contract, get the paint ordered, and then um, painting happens on the Labor Day weekend. And all are invited because we're going to have 
have to get portalettes. We're going to be doing sinks out in the world. I don't yet know how we dispose of the pain. Start really early, right? What's that? It will start early. Okay, cool. That's to make sure. The artist is going to help me figure out when they want to do like shifts. Okay. Um, but there's going to be a lot of opportunities. Oh, the good thing is that Kylie Neighborhood, of course, for the reason that this uh, this is our first, you'll recall, um, neighborhood improvement project that is working with our public places. So this is kind of our pilot. So we're going to learn lessons together. Yeah. Right? yeah. After this event, that's when we're going to basically look at the whole camp work, right? On that side of it. So, Angela, can I make a comment on this? Yeah. So, sometimes you get lots of volunteers. Depending on what's going on in life, also, like, I think the back to school era is really tough for a lot of families. Yeah. Yeah. Mom, everyone's like, oh, well, crazy, right? So, um, it sounds like it's hitting that time frame. And so, we might put a call out to all the neighborhood to sign up for the volunteers. If we don't get enough, it'll be put it in like the city line or something like that. So, we get so the so the community paint is for the community, but the Kylie neighborhood is responsible for a lot of the volunteer stuff because that's their um, their contribution to the grant. Okay. So that's delineated in, in their the grant. Okay. So we don't have to worry then about what if we don't get any Kylie. Well, we do have to worry volunteers. About <laughs> I mean, <laughs> then problem. we might really consider how we do this. Forward. Yes, okay. exactly. Um, but I think that that's, and tell me if I'm wrong, but coming out of that meeting, it was very much, we're going to give you the shifts of volunteers that we need, leadership positions and then everything else. And we're going to market the community paint, you know, our public places and everyone's going to market the community paint. But you, Kylie Neighborhood, are responsible for filling these volunteer shifts um, these, these leadership okay. positions, right. because okay. that's the the grant. It's a matching grant. They have to bring something. Okay. I think it was like a 70, 70 30. So they asked for seventy percent in a dollar amount and monetized their volunteer hours. Sure. Sorry. Yeah. 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 No, but it's very valid point. Very valid. Very valid. Uh, can you mark the orient page where Kylie made the paint? Yes. Is? Um. There's a lot of between Kim Bark and Ember Ember. One of the blogs is mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a chance to know oh, how so it kind of sits in my head. It's a routine. It's a routine. Oh really? Yeah. I'll have to go back there. I can't oh wait. Here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, you don't have to worry. Yeah, I'll yeah. find it, don't worry. <laughs> what are your neighborhoods? Cool as well. Oh, yeah, yeah that's a good point. In the high school track. Okay. I think so. This is um, here, right? If it's on the east side of the I don't think it's so. I don't think so. I don't think so. I just want to let's go. I mean, it's a It's a temporary track. Yeah. Clark Centennial Park and Roosevelt Park are the big ones. There and there. And so this is Main Street. And it's just off of Main Street. It's right by the courthouse. It's right across the street, but it's right on the street. It's pretty close. Yeah, that's pretty close. Um, okay, how are we doing? 7 11. Um, any other questions relating to, regarding community murals? Lanyon Park, I think we've just, you know, we'll fig we're going to figure this one out. It's going to be a lot of And I, I, um, I already know. Uh, the, the paint disposal for me is going to be something that's really going to be a challenge. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm so excited. So um, it is shipping, and uh, I'm going to test it on concrete. I'm going to test it on asphalt. Um, but really, it's just like what happens when you need to clean your brushes? Like, does that go down the drain, down the hole? And then how do I continue to yeah. dispose of it? Yeah. Right. So I have to work back with my friends. So it's okay. It's just it's learning curve for me. Um, I, I always got another. Like 
forever. Like, yeah, once this project, you just right. like, you know. Once we know what we're doing, yeah. yeah. Like, we're really, I'm telling you right now, there are a lot of different public art programs that are doing ground murals very unsuccessfully right now. Really. I mean, oh, yeah. You, and so, can you acquire the names of the products that do not work? <laughs> I know. Do we spin the wheel no. again? I, I know. I think I've been researching this for a long time. No, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling really confident. And I'm not going to let them steal my ideas. And, and then we're going to we're, we're, we're going to set it, it up, and then I will share away once we do it successfully. But I've even talked to the LDEA about um, painting where they throw the um, the salt down during ice season and right. see how it holds up against that. Right. I want to see how it holds up against snow plows. Right. I want to see how it holds up when it bakes, and then I'll share. It. But I've got the manufacturer, the and they do it in custom colors. Any color you want, and that's been a problem with all the ground rails around town is they can only do so many colors. Mm -hmm. So you're testing oh. it this year. No, I got it right now. Mm -hmm. I've got. How are you going to? Oh yeah, so figuring it out. You'll, you'll, yeah, you'll we're the day on. we're not gonna. We won't do ground murals on anything that um, is asphalt or road or anything like that until it does the test the test time. But like Landon Park, where we can just do sidewalks for just like people or basketball courts, like, we're just going to start it's doing it like that. Neither one of those locations, I think, have a lot of uh, traffic to do them either. <laughs> yeah. Doing. But once we pay for the paint, then I can go and start painting places around town <laughs> and watch and start documenting all the things. Our plus <laughs> and I and <laughs> <love. laughs> One thing I thought was so cool, like, when I just saw my travels, like, I would just see, like, a random ladybug on the wall somewhere. You're like just little tiny tiny little murals. Rogue. Yeah. Rogue artists. But it's really cool. Mm -hmm. Just you know, if you kind of need to get these art there's there's this there's guy that's just everywhere and spotted all the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People are testing this thing. It's like how do you support that but also allow it to be rogue and free? Because a lot of the things they do, the guys like, yeah, we pay for that. And you're like, okay, Angela, go on. <laughs> also, Texas has a lot of Yeah. But they just like let it go yeah. because they have racist. They are. They're a little term. All right. Um, moving right along. Maintenance updates. Um, everyone should have received the new spreadsheet sign up online. I did realize as late, actually, thank you very much for saying, what did I sign up for? And I was like, well, why don't you know these things? <laughs> because it doesn't send you your list. After you send up, so sign up. So you might want to just keep a little list, and when you're like, I clicked on this and this and this and this, so you have a list. It also doesn't send me a list, so I actually have to go in and check on you. Um, and I don't know how to fix that to be automatic quite yet. The point is, sign up for like a half a dozen, and okay, so these are new ones as opposed to the ones that we did. Or stick time. with the ones that you've got going on. That's fine too. Yeah, okay. I just sent it back out because no, we have new people, wanted. so yeah, 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 yeah. we're just going to shuffle the deck and sign back up. But again, if, if three people are signed up for the same piece of artwork, that's actually awesome. Because if you go and you do the same report, and Eileen and I are reviewing reports, and they're all kind of the same, that's great. You all are observing the same thing. If one of them says one thing and one of them says something else, that's going to fly, I guess, like mm -hmm. something's weird. Um, and also, there's like the danger words, like, um, shark, sure. <laughs> or crumbling's a good one, standing water is a good one, wobbly would be a danger word. So, you know, so we're kind of keeping an eye out, and when you go through, you know, you're like, it's good, it's fair, if you're like, it's poor, it's a bad shape, then we're gonna, uh, stuff like <laughs> no, keeps her up at night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you have a list of what hasn't been like fixed? I mean, or do you just? I do. So right? once you all kind of go through it, I'm gonna keep an eye out, and the next month I'm gonna say there's a little pack of you who haven't even signed up for that, and I'll nudge you, nudge you, nudge you. Okay. Yeah. And if you go like just once a month, once a quarter, really, that's helpful. Like once a season, at least. Is really great. I'm just trying to easily figure it out to know what's taking and not. So no, just but sign up. Just sign up. Sign up. Just sign up. Yeah, that's the best way. Okay. Um, the other thing is we always have interns. We have a new intern coming on board. So um, 
we utilize these kinds of things for training opportunities too. So we have to do like a conditioner report of this pen, this case, and then we have to go out and get exposure. School stuff. Right? Nice. Uh, okay, so that's it. That said, uh, Night and Alpine was power washed two days ago. I observed it. Um, Tim with KT Painting and I have been fighting about paint chips for two days, and finally I just went and chunked off a piece of the wall. And chunked off a yes, I did. I chunked off a piece of the wall and I took it in there because they made people buy the paint right when you hand them the chip, and I said, no, my contractor's doing it. So I dropped off the paint chip today in the pouring rain and said, Tim will be talking to you tomorrow. He'll start painting on Monday. This is not that the overpaint. Yes, this is the base coat. So what's happening is if you go down there right now, it literally looks like a, a bunch of band-aids. So band-aid color over graffiti and like but it's this clean. Here. It's clean band-aids. So we're gonna put the blue down, then we're gonna put a notice down. And um, once I have Pat Milbury hammered out of when those community paint days are gonna be, then this project is gonna get rock and roll too. But it also will probably happen in the fall, late summer, fall, um, certainly before the weather goes bad. Mm -hmm. So, but it, we're moving along. So at least if it starts getting graffiti now, it'll just be blue and it will be band aids. It'll at least look clean. Yeah. Um, any questions about knife now? Are they going to leave the open the deck? Yes. Are relatively open. Yes. Because they're covered, believe it or not. Graffiti vandals don't no. want to graffiti on. No, the, I know this. I they know. Don't. And there's mural um, sealant on the top of those. Oh, so okay. every That's time it, if it does happen, then we can power wash them. But as soon as the new mural goes on, then we'll be sealing it up as well. And th those will be more volunteer shifts of putting up caustic sealant, mm -hmm. caustic, caustic sealant. Um, Fox culvert nests. Um, so yeah, it'll be a fun time. But it, it's gonna sure. it, it's gonna turn into something amazing. Okay. Anything else about maintenance? Um, our Nature's Way contractor comes in October. So. Oh, cool. So at least we'll have an idea of by the end of this year, we'll have an idea of either what it costs to repair it, mm -hmm. or if the cost outweighs making yeah. the hard decisions so we'll know more then. Um, um, uh, Pacific Health Conservation of Denver. Is that, are the, are we totally closed to both of the fiber pieces from the Civic Center? Um, no. 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 They're in storage. I thought, I know, but did we have to fire them? They're, no, they're DA session. They're, oh, they're they're yes. Okay, all right. All right. But whether or not, right. so not, it's not whether, whether or not the artist wants to pay to ship like that to oh, so they does. Um, okay, but yes, the session that's the thing that has okay. Um, okay, new business, union silos. I've been working with um, Dan Wolfer, who is the open space director about the union silos. If you have an opportunity to drive down county line, county, county line, county, county road, road 21. No, what line? County, county road, road one. Um, uh, and just go Ken Pratt County Road and you can't miss them. They're giant. Uh, I measured them. And I'm pretty sure they're 1,975 square feet total. Is one of them? Yeah. Is one of them on private property? They're all on our property. They're all. Or one of them. The city owns. The city owns them. Every, yeah. We own them. All right. Um, the open space people, when they purchased them did not get any documentation of how or if they were sealed. So we don't know the status of the masonry right now. We also don't know the status of the cage. There's like a rebar cage that like runs silos together. Right. 
Well, rebar, once it starts rusting, it doesn't stop rusting. Which begs the question, what can we do if it is rusting? And then, if we try to prevent it from rusting, basically, how long is it until the rust comes through? And if we paint a mural on top, and there's a cage of a grid underneath it, in some amount of time, you're going to have a mural that has a bunch of splotches all over it, right? Is the, is the, the rebar embedded in the concrete? No. No, it's on the outside. It, like on the exterior. It's like, okay. a cage. it's like a cage that holds the masonry and the work. So, um, I'm basically in a rabbit hole of awesome scientific products, <laughs> masonry, everything, and I have someone going in getting a lift and taking a look at um, if it's if it's rusting. If it's rusting, um, we're gonna have to make a decision. If it's not rusting, I have someone looking, um, my paint contractor is looking into the products that basically seals it and what um, farmers use basically to seal this kind of stuff. Um, and then maybe we can paint over it. Um, but chances are one way or the other, It'll have to be scrubbed and cleaned and then sealed and then primed and then painted and then sealed. And so my estimation of the artwork alone is anywhere between eight is probably in between seventy-five and eighty thousand each plus plus the prep. So I will have numbers for you, but I just want you to know, like, this is a very large project. Albeit could be potentially the coolest epic, <laughs> epic, <laughs> epic. But but um, I mean, it's it's not a it's not a small project. Um, that being said, 2023's, um, 2023's asset value is eight hundred twenty three's asset line item, which. Um, Budgets have not been approved yet, but they will be. They go August, yeah, August, September. Anyways, um, we budgeted over a quarter million, so it's in our budget. Um, have we thought about putting just a sheet around the page and just using the page and the ratings? No, no, it will, we have to work with what we have because, but I mean, that might be cheaper than trying to scrub and. I would have to replace it, which then we are talking about structural engineers. And I mean, maybe, maybe incorporate the rust. Well, I think that there yeah. is that. That is actually a legitimate thought. Of the I see. Um, because it, like we're talking about the um, the abstract geometric guy, and we just look at artists that that is their wheelhouse, and we're like, here's your grid, and you need to work within it because that's uh, because at some point, like that grid is is real. So I don't know. Yeah, sorry. Does it have to be a mural? Because what I'm adding, it could be um, metal sculpture squishes that come down from the top to a certain point or something. Or like the aluminum. Colorful. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 And so that might be a different kind of offset of price yeah. in doing all that prep work to get to the mural. Yeah. Um, I also just. Um, Heard about and I did not want to go see it. Somebody did an overpass, and an underpass um, over by a Tesla mural. Um, they did ceramic, huge ceramic tiles cool. that um, are going through there. Yeah. And I don't know how they attach them all, and I don't know if I should go see it. I mean, that is, I can always get a structural engineer out and say, all right, if we were going to adhere to this, you know, sheath or otherwise, like, what would that be? I'd like to bring the mural dollars back to you to either scare you enough out of it and yeah, say, we need yeah. to take another We're route, or, you know, or, or we investigate, hey, we 
want something that adheres, we know that it can hold X, Y, and Z, and we want solar panels that are illuminate, and we want, you know, yeah. whatever. Like, right. we can yeah. take this project wherever we want it to go. Absolutely. Yeah, so what would you the sequencing of them would be so cool. I yeah, think that that's where the city was coming from at offering them is as a series, right? right? There's three of them, and they're while there's space in between them, like it's clearly yeah. that they're a set. set. Right. Sorry, what Jennifer, you were saying? Let me see if I can. Oh. That's okay. Okay, I can't pull it up. That's okay. So, I was going to say, one of the coolest things I saw in this concept was that there was the old farmer side silo, like concrete going like what you guys are describing. You know how they have all the grain windows, mm -hmm. right? So, so they uh, put like colored glass in those grain windows, oh, yeah. and they made a, a circular staircase on the inside, and it's like an attraction. So you can go and go up this thing, and then they, they put a floor in, so this is the top of the silo, they put a floor in like, you know, below, and the, they have holes so you can see out, and you can go up there, and you can see out, and they have a zip line coming out of one of those that you can zip down on. Well, I'm not suggesting that you would zip on that one, but <laughs> <laughs> that would be the Parks Advisory <laughs> Board. <laughs> Museum people are like, did that happen? It was really cool. It's very cool. In a way, right? So on the inside of the silo, they put artwork all the way up. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then they put some of the inside. So it's like an attraction. Yeah. People go to all the way up to the top. Yeah. And it's really cool. Yeah. You have to go up there and look out and survey all the other things. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
to do with art in public places, probably. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we could, but I. Um, it's more of a permanent. Yeah, so they don't last very long, um, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things. Um, ways that vinyl wraps have been used in art in public places and other communities is tra uh, the traffic boxes. Like when you come to a stop and you look over and there's the big metal ugly box that runs the traffic thing. Um, a number of communities have gone into like their photo archives and picked out a bunch of really great old photos and have those transferred into vinyl and wrap those suckers. And then when they go bad, you strip the vinyl off and you replace it. Yeah, um, they're mass manufactured in our guidelines. That's not typically the kind of material. Like mass manufactured things isn't really um, the tendency for a public art, but um, it's not so but it's it's not. better to have something else to make your own from here. You know what I mean? I just think it's something you should consider. Okay. Yes, I can look at what 1975 square feet of vinyl at cross I just don't think that on a masonry, but I guess, you know, again, like if we figured out a structural engineer and then covered the historic silo in something to then wrap it, I, I can look at what that is. I've never seen it done before, but that doesn't mean that you don't try new things. Yeah. Really good. Okay. Um, Final wrap. I do think that there are though maybe other like the traffic boxes or other things that it is super appropriate for. Um, yeah, I haven't seen the site, so I'm just saying like I they're masons, so they're called they're masonry bricks. Abandoned it just because yeah, but then it's a historic structure, right? But it's not historically preserved, so that's why they can paint it or put art on. Um, so there's a silo between 66 and um, I would say Green Road, maybe. And there are all those dirt roads out there in between those two roads, and it's got and um, the newspapers done things on it before. Oh, yeah. It has um, sunflowers all over it. Oh, yeah. It's private, um, and the guy who owns the property for a second. His children and they called the drop artist back and had more sunflowers put on it and sitting artists because he had grandchildren there. Aww. And I, sometimes I do a bike ride all the way out there and it's really quite lovely and it's been there over 10 years. Wow. Um, Is it a flat silo? No. I mean, I mean uh, the surface, does the, sur does the I, surface? I don't. You know, I, it's part of the problem because I can't walk up to it. Yeah, and yeah. See it real well from the road. So, like the ones, the um, ones that are over by the balcony. Yeah. Tall, so yeah. you can go back and search that article yeah. and then get in touch with the person. Like the three that are over by Bootstrap are like silos from the uh, 70s or 80s, and so they're not like masonry, right? Like they're there's some sort of flat. Uh, they're flat, oh, but see. these silos are like they're farm, they're agricultural, they're agricultural silo, silos, right? So they're made out of they're made out of masonry blocks, right? They're stacked blocks, mm -hmm. and then there's the cage that's holding them so they don't fall over. And I think the green one is. Right? This is, uh, um, this is the car and that grid. So it's structurally sound. That's why the city offered it to us. Could it just stand there forever and the new car continue to rust and it would stay structurally sound? I don't know if that sounds good. I mean, you know, the, the only reason the city gave it to us and suggested it as as a vehicle for public art is because we own them and they're there and they're sound and they spent a lot of money right there where the bike path goes through. And so it was one of those opportunities for the 1% to kind of go back into the area from which the project funded our public places. And I'm just, I guess, since I haven't seen it, I'm, I mean, I'm trying to imagine. Yeah. How, how big are the open spaces? How much rust? 
believe it's that out of word. The open spaces are about like eight and a half, eight and a half by ten. Okay, so Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 yeah. Yeah. Right. And um, and, and, and swallows go and nest here. So it was told that there's only certain times that we're allowed to be painting because the swallows nest because it's open space. Mm -hmm. So it's I mean it's a big bad complicated project and again like the initial idea was painting. So that's why we're down this road, but it's not, again, it's not to say that we're going to get further down this road and we're going to look at it and say, that is the wrong direction. We need to really put us on the map in a lot of ways. Yeah, they're huge. They're amazing. I think it's definitely worth exploring. Yeah. So one thing that, so, so oh, yes. she compares the towers to a second map. I think there's three. Is that by Yeah, they yeah. are. Yeah. Is that by Bootstrap? So, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know who owns those though. I don't know. But that's not to say just because we don't own them doesn't mean that they're not available. <laughs> but but those are so imagine those. They're these silos are the absolute opposite of those. Like there's nothing smooth about these at all.
part of the business. That's in San Diego. Yeah. So yeah, they can do it in somewhere else in the country before they got actually in the pool. They went and I talked to like 45 people who were really so cool and so lovely. And they were like, oh my gosh, there's so much art here, it's so cool. And they were so excited to, to have a map and to really go and then check things out. So um, so it was wonderful. People were just loving the art. They're so grateful for it. So it made me feel really good. But I wanted you guys all to get that feedback that what we do is worthwhile for the city. So you think um, for next year? So Juneteenth came off as like a bullet train, and by the time it was like we want to do a youth art competition and X Y Z T shirts, and I think that that's what I was going to do. It's March, and Juneteenth is March. So, if we start at the end of this year or beginning of next year, we have to. If it's youth, we definitely need to figure out collectively if we do an IGA and work with the school district, or if we work with Shakita like directly and do an IGA. Like, why? Why? I don't you know. You could do. You could do a couple no, of different no. things. So, like, you could have some art made by the kids in high school and do a competition. Right. Um, or if you do something where each high school, you know, or elementary school, whatever, does a group packet, right, that they present at Juneteenth, and you can put it under the big metal pond. Um, because we have some space in here, but that wasn't used. So you would have something that's meaningful for the kids and that would be a learning experience for them to learn more about Juneteenth. We just have to remember, of course, that when we commission artwork, well, now that we're going into the temporary world, you know, we can start thinking about making more temporary opportunities for people to participate and uh, create works. That said, we also want to start setting precedents, right? If we're starting in year one, if we're acquiring a piece of art for Juneteenth from a person of color within the youth community, or whatever in perpetuity where does it go where do we put year two and year 20 and year 25 that are all are they the same size what does that look like right and so we're starting to like think about setting the precedent of how is it that our public places effectively and successfully supports Juneteenth art Creation. You know, because we can always like partner with somebody and say, hey, let's make stuff and put it up, right? But that's not really our mission, right? So how is it that that we empower them and engage them and make it meaningful and then put it and make it a part you of our collection, you know? Like if our sidewalk becomes a little small, right? right? So you want the sidewalk there. You could say every but there's a tile basically for yeah. each, you know, on the sidewalk. You could do the other year, three or four squares, two squares or whatever, um, you know, they painted and designed this mission and, and the painting could go on and on and on and on and on and on and So I think that that's definitely, like if Juneteenth is, and, and I think Shakita is absolutely so dead on with like the, a group of them yeah. around that sidewalk all the time. Right, yep. If she decided she wants to go into a park. But I do think it was a park setting. That's the other piece of it. The same place, yeah. Which we've learned from Dia de los Muertos over, over 20 years, right? It's never the same place, it, it will never be the same, <laughs> no. Um, but but as long as it's as long as it's it's needed, as long as it's intentional, right? So if, if if it goes in Roosevelt Park, even if the event isn't there every year, but the art public places painting event happens in Roosevelt Park and Park says yes, uh -huh. um, you know. The, that that's something that we stick with and we keep moving to. So, um, but anyways, the point is that we definitely should start at the end of the year um, formulating the what, so we can get the IGA in place because we can't work with kids and we can't photograph them and we can't, you know, until we get lots of permission. Right. So yeah. the other thing yeah. that we can potentially do is uh, we talked about this with the gentleman that came and talked to us about his event experience, right? And so maybe we do some sort of experience where we can set up with a, a almost like a ladder that you can walk through with screens and you can have you know digital art that would be on the, this experience that people can walk through it at, at the park. Yeah, place making opportunity. Yeah, and that would be an experience. 
speak with the government, and it's not their turn. Yes, so that could be something that can be done over here that could be updated. Yep, and it could be different and new. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Doesn't this just like fall into the same category of like our little mobile bus? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. like, this is like, when the trial happens, like, that's perfect. Look at that. I'm not joking. I mean, how long have they told us? Your butt, your your truck is coming. Well, you can use it for other things. Girl, we can share. I have a shed. We, we, we have a shed. We have a shed now. So we can just move things into our shed. And then you can move artwork and we'll clean. And then we'll move. No, it's totally possible. That right, there's no glitter in that shed. That's true. You never glitter. No glitter. You can't have that. You see a No glitter in that shed. It's part of the rules. Juneteenth, no glitter. <laughs> so all right, so we, I mean, we can idea all day long, right? But I do think that the point is that we need to get started on Juneteenth earlier so we can get this done and done well, and then, you know, task force so it out and figure it out. Not work. Oh, I know, I sent you a... Uh, so that was a bummer. Yeah, was, which one did that go to? It just, it, it opened, it started to open the website, but then it never opened. But what was it supposed to open? Uh, it was supposed to open um, the shop art uh, and uh, some, several other pages. So uh, it was supposed to have the, the page for art the places and the shop art. So I, you know, it, it just failed. So the so the city now has its own QR code um, generator. Okay. So we're not allowed to use that to not all like manage ourselves anymore, which is probably a good way. Um, but it's just something for you to know. Yeah. Thanks. So we don't have that. So we don't do it again. Okay. Um, okay. Any so other new business? This is a quick thought. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's anywhere online, and I have not looked, but your friend Laura here could have had any information about the dealings. It was, it was buried. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So have like, you looked at times. the city website? It's okay. But I just was just a thought. <laughs> 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 single third Thursday until the end of time, like through 2023, and we'll pre-populate our Facebook page. Does like with like to when meetings are happening? Yeah, be like, hey, this upcoming, like, I don't know, like the Monday before and the, and the, the day of, yeah, the morning of, and if you'll, just like fun copy, because I write the same copy, it's always, hey folks. <laughs> it always starts with it. I know. Because I don't want to say hey boys and girls because that's not the same. Hey, hey, you know? hey, hey, yeah. Yeah. Hey, 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 art lovers. Just yeah. 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 Like, so, and, um, hey, and then if you hey, write, yeah. even in a spreadsheet, like Monday of, of August, Wednesday or Thursday of August, okay. Monday of September, Thursday of September, and then I'll populate it with images and correct links and then I can preload them and then they'll go out at least on Facebook. It was just my fault because I just yeah. asked like a hundred times and yeah. I just didn't get information to you. So then I was like, like maybe we can make this easier for anybody looking. Like, no, because like, like, she at least knew about it, you know, versus the other person. So I just thought it was like, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, it's right. totally, totally. The so I just thought it was just a thought. So, so the museum's lucky enough to have their own micro site. Um, and the city is allowed to have an Instagram account. But we, as art and public places, are allowed to manage our own Facebook account and our own web pages, but not where you can find the web pages. <laughs> <laughs> That's just so, anyways, <laughs> sorry about that, but glad you're here. I made it. No, that's a really good one. Um, any other commissioner comments? Oh, uh, to that point. Not allowed. Nope. We do it as a public thing. Where we're like, okay, this is when the shock art mode will be happening. This is, I 
can send you a calendar. Yeah, we, can't a, we can't have a we can't have a SharePoint site. I can't have anything so that you can log into. Right? Why can't we do that? Why can't we Facebook have, events. We can do Facebook yeah. events. I do that all the time, every day. Or so, so, so the city's calendar, and I, I'm not trying to be a no person. I really am not. And I'm just like at a point, I lean it back. Like the museum is lucky enough to have its own event calendar because it has its space. I can ask to be added to the museum calendar, but like um, I really do think that people would want to know because when I was out at G two, lots of people were like, "Yeah, I don't know what's going on. You know, all these voting events, and we have a Facebook page, right? I and these are open meetings." Like, I, I, I know, but I just don't think that a lot of people would be used to it. So, no. so no. Yeah. 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 But people do go to the museum calendar. They do go to the museum calendar. Um, I can ask. And I and also, it feels like the communications team is. It, it's a medium and some civilians on the ground. It's gotten better. I'd say just even in the, the five years I've been online, that I would say that I definitely. See more than I've ever seen in the past. You know what there is though is the community or the, the creative district. We could send all of our stuff to the creative district and have them populate it on their calendar and publicize the creative district as an outlet for marketing for us. That would be a really cool idea. Do you also have to call post events on Facebook and that or the creative district? Okay, that we can, that we can that we can absolutely do. We just can't. We can't make any of that ourselves. Does that make sense? Like, so even on our web pages, we can't have we are a city. We make the house crazy. Uh, to not I always share from my Facebook because then it goes out more and more. And so the artists in my friends group share, and so you know that's a not the most efficient way, but. Yeah, I mean, from a marketing standpoint, I think we have our we have our email blasts, which we do quarterly, and then you know we have our Facebook page, which I'm not very good at, but I try. Um, yeah, calendar wise, there's also the Boulder County Boulder County Arts Alliance. They have a calendar. Um, the, um, that you can populate events on. Is it your I don't know how they work. Yeah. They you work can, well. if you would like to investigate all of the <laughs> calendars and ways that we can populate. Um, you know, I can send content all day long, or 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 we can co-create content. And then, if you we want to sit down and load these things up, that would be amazing. But it's just well, us creating our own. Find live events on it. I go to Google and I say, show me live music. I had have the Instagram fight one time. I lost. Maybe <laughs> 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 I don't know how to say it. Like, I, I'm a city employee and I'm stuck in the parameters I'm stuck in. Like, yeah, I mean, you know, like, it's kind of a. It, um, because uh, we're when Chiquita's here, talks to me, she's like, yeah, you know, um, it's, it's frustrating. Like, it's frustrating as an employee of the city and trying to. Doing amazing things and hearing that people aren't caring about them, like it hurts me too. Like, it's yeah, sure it does. Sure um, it does. But I think the outreach events is a great way that we get out there. Getting people to sign up and get our newsletter is a great way. Bringing a friend is a great way. Um, but yeah, like the the whole like uh, you know even working like a nonprofit works or even working like company works like for the city. We don't care. We just don't. Mm -hmm. like, we're stuck in. You know, I've dealt with boards on these various levels before. We were stuck in a weird place between the city commission, which is also ruled by the state rules on meetings and activities. And that's that's where we're stuck with a lot of old fashioned rules and parameters. Yeah. That don't really reflect how people receive it. 
information right now. Right. So, I mean, I guess we could, well, somebody could try talking to the public information officer. I'm sure he'd be going like, yeah, 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 that's a good idea. You know. Huh. But to be fair, they did meet at the museum this last week. Yeah. They met at the museum and they saw the activity that was happening here and they have a new portal now for us to, if we want communication to go out in different ways, the different people that we're trying to reach and how we want to reach them. So I think that there's, again, slowly more resources for us to, to feed to send information out, um, but us creating our own in this way. Good point. Uh, you're yeah, and very good. We absolutely can do that. that. No, that well, uh, I'd be happy to talk about that. Like, yeah, like, write a letter. You want to yes. write a letter from the from the, yes. from the, from the Art and Public Places Commission and say we're frustrated that we can't have an Instagram account for etc. etc. Yeah. You want to write right. that letter and I can be the deliverer. Happy to. I would be happy to go to council if that's what you're doing. You know, I don't think it's council. I think it's um, um, all yeah. information. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So I think that, I think it's very fair start. to say that we have a we have Facebook and we have our own um, email list, which is that's large. We have access to the city line when they decide to publish what we give them, um, which happened this week. Ooh, which yeah. That's great. Um, and then we have the PIT team, which if we have things that we want to send, we can send it to them and tell them we want to send this into the community and they figure out how to do it. And we have our web page for what it is and the pages that we have. So I would say that those those are the ways um, that we communicate with the world. So we don't, definitely do not have a calendar, but I could investigate the museum calendar 100%. Um, we absolutely, have the creative district calendar and Boulder County Housing or Boulder County Arts Alliance calendar that we could actively, as a board commission, choose to gather our own things and pop. Oh, okay, so. Um, so we have those things. That would be the package that I would say that is available to you as a board commission okay, so at this time. No, this yeah, the how do they get the materials out? To that, and then they do their jobs. Okay, but so okay, but are they sending you an email through our department number? Or the, I send the emails. You send the emails. So when you give something to them, what is the next step? So when you go on to here, let's look at it together. Okay. So when you send them a, you know, so they don't like control the city line. So They're the communications department for the city. They manage communication, all communications, all messaging, how something is sent, if it's in if it's in uh, AP style versus whatever style. They edit you. <laughs> um, the you know it, it's it's city department. Yeah. Um, so sometimes how I get into the times call and those that are my press releases, which I send myself, but I can also send them to them and they can send it beyond, right? Hmm. Oops. Yeah, I'm not trying to frustrate you. No, no, I, it's a, no, 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 no. And, and I'm not trying to get frustrated beyond how it's already frustrating. It's just a frustrating thing. Um, let's see. Here it is. Um, I, I think there's just, there's some bit of all of them that you can do throughout the city and the water. There's like 15, and we're not the most important in the room. <laughs> I, I know, and I would say that to anybody who ever asked me. I think I'm just putting different buttons. Yeah, well, that's an essential service. Like, home prices is not necessarily essential. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, there's all kinds of questions that they ask you. I have a legal star form, but I don't have the new comps form for legal. So, well, I, I think maybe you didn't, I, I wasn't clear with you. It's your response to be different from what I expected. So, what I'm saying is, I would be happy to talk to the PIT team and ask them. If, you know, if you already just know the answers, that's fine. But I thought I could talk to them to say, what are all the ways that you can help us get your messages out? And, um, and I was just going to say, I think that, uh, again, if, uh, if the board and the commission has a question for the city, I'm the liaison for the city and it needs to go through me, I can ask the questions. If you want to give me the questions you have, okay. I can give them. If you go to city council or you go to a communications department and skip me, somebody's oh, going to say, Angela, are you doing your job? Yeah, no, no, or, you know, so, um, so as liaison for the commission, um, if there's a, if there's a question or whatnot or concern, I think, oh, here it is. Um, 
needs to come from the body, and uh, then I'm happy to communicate that over of what it is. With. So here it is. Here's their new SharePoint site, and um, here's your Explore Your Comms Resources. So here's your guides and you, how you get editor, your editorial guide. Of course, yes, yeah. Yes, okay. Here's your documents and your license photos. Um, and then you can go into tell us what you need, crafting your message, developing, you know, how do you want to talk with the community? So aside from me um, taking what programs we have, what content we have, and putting it through the ways we previously discussed, if there's any other way that I want to talk with the community, this is how I have to do it, right? And so then I can even go in and check on my requests and see, like, here's the recent tasks that I did for this month of, I want an e-notification. I need a list of press contacts so I can send my press release. So I, here, I have these ones. I need the list for my other ones. Um, I need help creating, oh, here, I need the sign for the bear that's gonna be encaged soon. Um, and I need it in Spanish and English and I need it quick. And I need to know what you, the city, wanted to say. Because if I say, hey, if you have questions, come and ask me, it's just about the bear. But people are gonna come and ask me about the development and what's going up there and why are they taking down that mural and whatever. And I don't wanna be the central point of contact for that. So then that messaging needs to go through the city. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, any of the messaging that I'm sending out through our email or our Facebook or our other is very art and public places specific always, right? Anything that is bigger and beyond that needs to be in a bigger form. Does that make sense? I'm sorry, I don't mean to be frustrating, but it is a frustrating thing. I'm trying. No, so, no, you're not um, really hard. I'm not being critical of you, but I want to make sure you know that. Yeah. The guy is saying, like, how come we don't know? Any additional comments? 
All right. Thank you for your forgiveness and grace. I'm a Leo. Just you can really tell, right? I know.